Welcome back to another episode today. We're going to be fitting a short shifter linkage thing. Um, all it does is moves the point where one of the linkages fit further in, which obviously means less movement for the gear stick to move. This is quite a common upgrade and a lot of people have said that they're really good for for uh, getting a better feel from the gear lever. I've already got the um, 42 draft design bush shiftings in there. So the next bit is the short shifter. And then once that's done, there'll be another bit to get, which is the sidearm. Mine's plastic, so there's a lot of flex in that. A lot of people say change that for a metal one and it will improve the gear shifting a lot better. So we're gonna jump straight into this one. Um, I know it's been done quite a couple of times. Uh, a lot of people ask on the forums how to do this, so hopefully I, I can make a sort of bit of a tutorial for you guys to look at. So here we have the box, uh, it did come in bubble wrap, I've already opened it. Inside you get a um, the shift linkage, which is obviously this is the, the movable pin. You've got selections of pins, they sit inside and you can select. The closer it is to this hole here is the shorter the shift further away is the longer shift because it has further to move rather than being closer. Okay, so we've got the standard one off. Uh, oh, and the little trick with those is to undo the nut and then take it all the way off. Make sure it's in neutral still. Um, and then tighten it all the way. Well, not all the way back up, but three or four threads back on there. And then put the socket and the extension bar back on and hit it with a hammer a couple of times. It actually pops this off without doing any damage to the pins in there. Uh, just a little easier trick to get it off. So this is the adjustable part. So this one matches what we have in there already. Um, all we need to do is put it in here a lot of people sort of put it right at the end but I find that sometimes it gets a bit notchy there so I'm gonna probably knock mine back about a quarter of an inch maybe half an inch um, I only want to just shorten it slightly so and then you, you put the nut in that sits in this little groove and you just tighten it down right so there it is uh, this is the mounting point for the gearbox where it sits on the pin this is the original placement of the um, pin on the car so pretty much how much further we've moved it in doesn't look a massive amount but it is definitely going to be shorter than what is uh, currently on there so hopefully that will reduce the throw in the gearbox itself um, just only the bit where side side movement is pretty alright it's the back and forth movement which I wanted to reduce so that should do that now a uh, little trick as well um, with these little bits in here you can see that it's actually missing a tooth right there um, you have to line it up with the pin on the gearbox. A lot of people don't, and uh, when they put that onto the gearbox, they just sort of put it back roughly where they think it should be. That's actually a, a, an alignment pin. You can see that's the new one, and the old one is uh, just there to the left. Once it's lined up on the gearbox, it's just a case of tightening down the nut again. Um, I am going to check to see if there is any wobble, because sometimes you have to put a washer on top here. Um, so I will check that before. Uh, once it's tightened down if it does move then I will just chuck a washer on there and that will hold that down further and steadier against the actual the actual part As I said before, um, we did check the uh, movement on it and once that belt is on, 
there is actually quite a lot of uh, play in there. So I'm just going to take that nut back off, drop a washer onto it, and it should solid it up a lot more. Okay, so we've got it fitted now. Um, I mean, first and second is really short. It's third, that's fourth. I think I'll have to check for because it seems to be very short and just drop in itself. Fifth is nice, sixth is nice, and reverse is there. I'm just going to start the car up and see if we've got any grinding as we're going into the gears. Right, so this is the first time I've tested this. First is there, second, third. Fourth and fourth is in gear, fifth, sixth, and reverse. They're all there. Very short. It's actually really nice and solid, and there's no movement. We've got a little bit of side to side movement. That's the little bit of play I was on about with the plastic shifter on the side. I mean, but that is a massive improvement over stock. It just feels so much more positive, and it's a lot less movement that I've got to make. Fourth is very drop in, I mean that may lose, that's sort of loosening up already so I'll give that a chance to sort of break in a little bit and it should be pretty good so that was a Motorworks um, a WG Motorworks part that I ordered, I ordered that yesterday and it came today at 11 o'clock so I ordered that I think about 1 o'clock yesterday so that's pretty good, I mean that's good in, especially in the current situation with everything going on at the moment um, that's all in and fitted. I will take it for a test drive in a minute just to make sure I am happy with uh, how it's all engaging. If it isn't engaging nicely then I will obviously just notch it back a tiny bit to a longer throw ever so slightly and that should open it up a little bit more and make it a bit more so. But I mean as I'm saying it's going through the gears fine. It just depends obviously at higher RPM how, how good it goes into, into those gears. Um, so a lot of times on the TFSI groups, you see people putting the wrong fuel filters on the car. Um, this is a genuine filter, um, straight from a place called Coverdale Parts. Um, this is the part number if you need to see that. Um, and you also got to make sure that it says 6.6 .6 bar on it. I don't know if you can see that. There you go, 6.6 .6 bar. Uh, the reason is that for a lot of places they sell four bar or five bar, I can't remember, and that will actually restrict the fuel to the engine which will slow the car down the, the engine won't be seeing all the right the right parameters that it needs to for the ECU because you've got the wrong fuel filter on so sometimes a lot of problems can be solved by just changing a small little part I mean this was 20 pounds it's not massive amounts um, it is quite expensive for a fuel filter you can get a lot cheaper and everything like that they will sort of do the same job but you'll probably won't get a 6.6 .6 bar one which may cause you problems especially if you're running at aftermarket um, management or tuning on the actual vehicle uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull it off the car I'm going to cut the old one open and show you how dirty they get I don't know how long this has been on the car it supposedly changed probably 20,000 miles ago but I mean for £20 every 10,000 miles worth doing keeps everything going 
and hopefully we'll see some uh, improvement with it maybe some a little bit more drivability just smooth it out a little bit i uh, also bought a oil, a new oil filter as well from the same place which is covered our parts um i will post a link in the uh description for that guy because he's, he's brilliant i mean the first ones got sent out and they got lost in the post and he sent another set out without any questions asked i haven't received the older set i said did say to him if it does turn up i will send it back to him because uh I'm awful, I'm not about messing people around and taking taking parts of free off people and stuff like that. So, And also, a thing that's quite overlooked is a new sump plug. One I've currently got in there, I think it's a magnetic one and it's leaking a little bit, so um, it's only losing like a drip every couple of days. So I just wanted to make sure that it's not leaking anymore, so I did all that, I mean that was three pound. And I think the, the oil foot was about 10 pound, so it's really not expensive stuff. Um, so here's the uh, fuel filter, it's under the back of the car, uh, driver's side, just in front of the rear wheel. If you stick your head under next to the fuel tank you'll see it. It is held in by one little screw which is there, um, underneath there. Mine was quite rusty so I'm going to replace that. It's just a single headed, I've got a couple of spare so. Next what we're going to do is just these two pipes, there's little clips on the ends, just here and here. Them two need to come off and then another one needs to come off at the front here. They're just little push clips and they slide off and then it's just a case of sliding the actual filter out of the bracket and changing it over. So there's the new fuel filter in. Uh, I had to usually use that skew because it uh, the screw because it didn't actually have a spare one. It's quite a thick sort of shaft on, this, on that. Um, always remember this side there, there's two colours of pipes. You've got to remember which side they go. So mine was blue in the centre and black on the outside. And then there's a single outlet there. So we've got the old filter off the car, I mean it doesn't look too old, it is a Bosch filter which is always a good thing. And it does also have 6.6 .6 on the bottom, so that is a bonus, it has been had the right fuel filters. So I put these clips back on here just so we can pour out the uh, fuel that's in there at the moment and just see what colour it is. So I'm going to end up just popping that yellow one off. Now this is a clear container so anything bad in there will come up and show up. So that's it all poured out, I mean that's, there's not much left in there, I did lose quite a lot on the floor but you can see it's quite dirty and uh, not not very nice. So I'm going to cut up and open the filter next, uh, I'm just going to literally chuck it in the vise and cut the end off and then pull the filter out and see, I guarantee it will be pretty dark and dirty so I mean oh, there's some more actually coming out the other end. Just let that all drain out in there, that's all I can see. So yeah very dirty and that's not ideal really um it's fine it's, it's not going to do much harm but it is going to sort of be uh, impeding performance and everything like that so glad i changed that that is actually rather rank so that should be nicer for the engine at least uh, it won't clog up all the injectors and everything like that there's the end chopped off and this is the fuel filter uh, you can see it's not, I mean, I ignore the metal parts, that is mostly uh, bits of the shaving where I've cut it around the edge, but I mean, it's not massively dirty, it's been doing its job, I'll just put it out there, and that's inside, so you can see where the fuel comes in and returns through there, uh, nothing really too complex, but I'm going to sort of spread some of these little bits in here. You can see it's quite dirty in there, so yeah, glad I changed that. Fuel flows through this and uh, then back round and then comes back through. So what happens is this sits inside the, of that little chamber. The fuel comes in at the top and it filters through this basket um, into the centre, which then comes out this side, which is your outlet. So it filters all the crap through the outside here, so the inside is probably fairly clean. But it is still a very dirty filter. I'm glad we changed it, especially considering the, the colour of the fuel that came out. So hopefully we should see a bit more better running. So the last job with that was to just start the car up, which I've already done. Uh, let it idle for a second. It might stop. Um, that was probably due to it running out of fuel. Nine times ten, if you just turn the key on, let the ignition prime up the fuel system a little bit, and then, then start it. So give it 10, 20 seconds. Then start it. It's pretty good from there. Mine didn't actually stop, so it was fine. Um, it seems just a bit quicker on the revs. Um, I'm about to go for a test drive now, so I'll pull it back once it's all done. Right, 
so that's the end of the video i've just took it for a test drive everything's working brilliantly it actually feels a lot better than what it did before which is kind of strange because it wasn't actually that bad before either um it's just a little bit smoother on the acceleration it doesn't need as much throttle to uh to get it going to start off um it feels just a little bit smoother i've got a couple more pops and little bits from the exhaust so it's obviously getting a bit more fuel through to itself uh other than that the um the shift linkage feels brilliant like i can't wait it's such a difference i, I drove it every gear is bang on where it should be i might do a little bit of a, a linkage reset or buy myself some new linkages because i think that these ones are a tiny bit stretched uh just fifth and sixth just seem to be a little bit notchier than uh, all the others so it's either just a little bit of a reset that needs to be, maybe just be that couple of little mill out. So you can order the little pin um, offline to pin the pin the actual gear lever back. So I might do that um, and just reset the linkage just to make sure we are 100%. But other than that, yeah, super happy. Short shifters, brilliant. The um, fuel filter's working great. Um, I didn't do any um, data logging at all or anything like that, but I shall see a difference, hopefully, in my miles per gallon as well. I was getting about 23 to 26, 27 uh, on the way to and from work, which is mostly dual carriage way. So it will be a case. Hopefully, I can get it up to maybe 28, 30, or that'd be ideal, really. Uh, just a case of waiting and waiting and seeing until I go back to work. So uh, thanks for watching and. Um, Hopefully you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.